Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to talk about exhaust manifolds, uh, specifically about turbo manifolds and different ways in which we can model them. Now, this question has come up a few times. A little while back, I did an intake manifold series talking about different ways to model an intake, and I've gotten the question about how to do an exhaust, and there's a couple of common things that we need to understand. So when you're building your own exhaust, there are generally two main workflows for the DIY, the, the people doing it at home. One of those is to use weld elbows. Uh, these are predefined bends. Usually they're at 45 degrees, 90 degrees, sometimes 22 and a half degrees. And these are, a lot of times they'll be cast or they'll be stainless steel. And you simply buy a bunch of elbows and straight sections and you put them together and build your exhaust that way. The other method is to buy, uh, either have a mandrel bender or to buy mandrel bent tubing and then cut it yourself. So when I do this, and when I've done this in the past, I've typically bought a bunch of mandrel bent tubing in 180 degree increments. So they'll have a couple of straight sections and then a 180 degree bend. And basically what you do is you cut it at the various angles you need, and then you build your exhaust manifold that way. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about the design methodology, or at least the way that we can do this for both of those instances. And I will warn you here, that this is not a fun or easy process to do 3D sketching like this in Fusion. Um, I will talk you through it. We're not gonna do the entire thing. What we're gonna do is a single runner in one method, and then we'll do another runner in another method so you have an understanding of how that works. Because honestly, there are not very many people out there that are probably doing this for a 2.6 liter starting engine anyways. So uh, another thing that's in the file, if you go to the description of the video, I did include a mesh in here. Now this was done with the Revo Point Morocco. This was just literally a two minute scan, but this gave me an idea on where the stock turbo was, which is a fairly small turbo. It's a uh, 12A using a Mitsubishi hot end. And I did a flange for a T4. Uh, so pretty standard, but having a scan like this gives us an idea of things like where the power steering is, where the, uh, it's unibody, but essentially where the frame rail is, and just kind of the general space that we have to work with. The main restrictions on this block, because there's actually tons of room around it, the main restrictions really come in the fact that there is an oil filter right in front of the exhaust manifold. And generally that would be relocated. Not a big deal for keeping a somewhat stock turbo location. But again, I just toss the mesh into the file so it's there. You can kind of get an, an idea or an understanding on just basic or general space requirements. So if you want to follow along, go to the description of the video. You can download this. It's going to have the T3 flange, the exhaust plate, as well as the collector. And the collector is just kind of a generic idea on putting four into one. You can buy these collectors with flanges already on them, and they can be uh, they can be built manually. But that process is honestly kind of a pain. So generally, I would I would look for a collector that I would want to use, or get really creative by manually cutting pipes. And I probably wouldn't design it in CAD unless I had some way to fabricate it. But the benefit of doing the runners in CAD is that we can actually get some measurements off of them. So the way that we want to start this is we're going to be taking a look at, let's uh, cylinder number one and cylinder number two. So for cylinder number two, we're going to come to this closest section and that's going to be our welded elbow uh, runner. And then for cylinder number one, we're going to do a method that um, I would do if I was just buying pre-bent mandrel tubing that I would be cutting up. And this is, again, this is generally the way I would do it. It's not going to be as strong as something like a thicker stainless steel welded elbow. Uh, so if you're trying to say support a turbo with the weight of, or with the manifold itself, then typically what you would do is you would run a thicker, a heavier pipe, but because we're building this, we could also connect the flange back to the flange at the head to help support it or put some extra bracing in it, whatever you want. It's a bit too deep for this video. But to get started, we're gonna begin a new sketch. Doesn't really matter what plane you pick because to get started, we're gonna click on this little button here to make it a 3D sketch. So when we're doing 3D sketching, 
it can be pretty complex in Fusion. I've done a few videos on 3D sketching for things like complex surfacing. When we're talking about it in the context of building something like a manifold, well, generally what we would do is we would come to our project include and select include 3D geometry. Uh, generally what I do with this is I'm going to include some geometry that I need to use as a reference. Uh, so for example, the, the, the back and the front section of the port that I'm working with uh, and for the collector, in my case, the collector itself, the ports are vertical or they're normal to the top plane. So all I need is this bottom edge here. Now, once I have those, I can actually hide those solid bodies because I don't need to see them anymore. Uh, and the main reason that we need to do that is because when we take a line and we say start from this point, this line can be vertical. That's pretty easy, straight up and down. But this one over here is at like a 15 degree angle. So we need a start and an end point to be able to capture that. Now I'm just gonna hit escape to get off the line tool. This, for whatever reason, is, is starting to struggle, probably because of the mesh in this file. Uh, so if you are, if your computer is just simply struggling, then you can just take and delete that mesh and that might help it uh, a little bit. The mesh is kind of heavy, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert these to construction. And now we've sort of got our, our start and our end point for where the pipes are gonna go. So the, the Starion itself, this G54 uh, 2.6 liter, the exhaust is actually at like a 15 degree angle, the ports on the head. The intake is perfectly flat, which would have been quite a bit easier, but because we've got this extra angle, it complicates things a little bit. Again, that's why we've got the inside and the outside include 3D geometry. But what we're going to do is we're going to get started with just a single arc. So go to your arc tool, three point arc. We're going to start at this point. And because we're in 3D, this actually gets pretty tricky because it wants us to just sketch in plane. So you will need to rotate it slightly to be able to snap to that point, which is honestly kind of a pain. But now this plane is going to be where that point is. So I'm just going to come down somewhere around here and make it go so that it's tangent. Now, if you're having trouble with this, you can always add that tangency after the fact, but we generally want to get it tangent from the go and then hit escape to get off the arc tool. So now we've got a tangent arc. The next thing that we need to do is we need to worry about the radius of this. This is the center line for our pipe. And the way that we're gonna do this is we need to, to control the radius value, but generally, if you're using a welded elbow like this example, you'll have a fixed angle and you're not going to be cutting these things. You're going to be using them at whatever angle they are. So what we're going to do is use our line tool and go from the starting point to the center of the arc and then from that point to the end of the arc and then hit escape. This is going to be construction and the shortcut key X on the keyboard is much quicker. And then what we want to do is select both of these and we want to make them perpendicular. So those are at 90 degrees. Next, we're gonna use our dimension tool and we're gonna give it a radius value. Now, for most of these, you would really need to look at the supplier that you're using. There are tons of them out there. If you're trying to build a, a DIY exhaust manifold, you just need to find the ones that have the appropriate port size. So if you're using inch and a half, inch and three quarter, two inches, whatever you're building for, and then you need to look at what centerline radius they have. Generally, you'll find these will be either in an inch system or a metric system, and you'll just have to do the conversion. So I know this one, I'm gonna use 57.15. That's gonna be a fairly common size, and that's going to be what's gonna drive this arc length. If you end up doing a bunch of arcs, then it's a good idea just to make them equal to this one. It'll simplify the process. Now I'm gonna escape to get off the dimension tool. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna rotate this around to, in this case, a left view. So this arc, uh, let's rotate it a little bit so we can see it. Um, this arc doesn't really behave the same way as it would in a 2D sketch. You can see as I'm starting to drag it, it kind of snaps around and it gets kind of ugly. The best way that I found to reposition this if we need to is to select it and use move. So M on the keyboard, or you can go to move copy here. Then we want to set the pivot. I'm going to set it up here. Say OK. And then once the pivot is set, we can rotate it a bit easier here. So it'll still maintain its tangency. We've still got those construction lines that are ensuring that it's only a 90 degree arc, um, just because of the way that 
well, first off, dimensioning in 3D sketches is kind of a pain, but uh, dimensioning arcs is not real great, honestly. So just using that move copy on that specific point will help you rotate it. Now, moving things around in 3D is something we want to avoid if we can, because again, it just doesn't work very well. But I would strongly suggest starting at the head, starting at the, the port, define that first arc, and then we can go from there. Uh, so from here, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a straight line coming down, and then I'm going to hit the check mark here. I'm going to do a straight line over here. This we want tangent, so kind of find that tangency reference and say OK, and then hit escape. So we should have a tangency reference between that line and this arc, and we should have a, a vertical reference here between where that is connected to our collector. So these lines, what we're going to end up doing is getting a dimension off them so we know how long our straight sections need to be if we're building a, uh, a manifold. And then we have to, of course, keep all these at 90 degrees. Um, again, this gets kind of ugly. And if we take a look at the first one I built, you can see that it's the same thing. We've got an arc here. We've got a straight line. And then what I did is I've got another arc, another straight line, and then you can see I actually went to a different port for this one. Uh, so we're going to play around with this. Again, this is an imperfect solution, but it's what we have to work with. If you're working in Fusion and you're trying to do this, this is the way that you have to do it. So we're going to do another arc as soon as it decides that it wants to let me do that. Um, again, part of the reason for this is the mesh body in the file. And part of the reason is just 3D sketching in general. Uh, so we're going to rotate this around, come over here, make sure it's tangent and hit escape. Once we have that, again, we're gonna be using 90 degrees. If you want, you can use 180 if you're gonna put two of these things together. If you can actually get these in 45 and 22 and a half degree increments, then you can include that as well. But basically what you would do is instead of doing a perpendicular constraint between this line right here, you would just give it an angle. Uh, so instead of 90 degrees, or instead of perpendicular, you would just put in a 45 degree angle, for example. Uh, we're gonna stick with 90, then I'm gonna use equal for the radius value. And now you can see that we're starting to build this out. Now, it gets, it, it gets very tricky um, simply because of the proximity to this port. And looking back at it and looking at the way I did the first one, um, you can see that I took it further away and that's for good reason because there is no way that this port is going to make this bend using a welded elbow or a weld L if we don't take it way out of the way. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and use project include, include 3D geometry, and I'm going to come to this one here. Then I'm going to hit escape, and then we'll basically build out the same reference. So using our line tool, we really don't need the vertical line reference here uh, because it can already be vertical going down, I just think this is good practice because very rarely are your inputs going to be perfectly perpendicular or perfectly in line with what you're designing. So getting in the habit of putting in some references like this can help. Uh, I don't need this one, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete it just to clean things up. And this is where we wanna connect to. So now we've got this section here. We need to make our way over. So again, the line tool, we're gonna kinda come out here, we want to make sure we don't snap to horizontal. We either want it to be perpendicular to this construction line or have tangency there. And then I'm going to do an arc. Now, if you are used to working in Fusion, you know that after you do a line, you can hold down the left mouse button and convert that to an arc. When we're doing this in 3D, that can work, but you oftentimes need to rotate your view around and it can get pretty messy. So what I want to do is I actually want to go between these points here and then hit escape to get off of that. Now, this probably isn't going to work very well, but we're going to start with tangency here, and then we're going to try to apply tangency here. Then we need to do an equal for that to make sure it's the same radius value, and then we need to make sure it's 90 degrees. So we're going to go from here to here, find the end point, hit escape, convert that to construction, and then we'll try to do a perpendicular constraint here. I can't guarantee that it'll work. You can see here that it failed to solve it. And oftentimes what happens if it fails to solve, uh, it's simply because the geometry just doesn't work. 
um, because you cannot make these angles work. So I'm going to use the dimension tool and I'm going to see what we're at. It looks like we're at 114 degrees. If I try to do 100 degrees, you can see that it flipped to the other side. So control Z, control Z, and then we can kind of play around with these and see if we can get them closer. But in some cases, as I mentioned, you just are kind of at the mercy of this. And this is one of the reasons I don't like to do this uh, in this method. I actually find it much easier just to do this manually, get a bunch of welded elbows and start to build it out in 3D how I want, because then we can move things around and make it work. Uh, in this case, what we would need to do is likely delete this line, make this perpendicular, and then try to connect these either with a straight line or an arc or something. And we'll just go between these straight line. And then we'll apply tangency to one of them and we'll try to apply tangency to the other. And again, you can see it's flipping up here. So it really does not like, um, it really does not like this. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to leave this past 90 degrees just so we can understand how it works. In order to get this to work, it would just take quite a bit of time. Um, now, I actually did get it to work on this first one here, but you can see I was going to a different collector spacing, and this is one of the issues that you're going to run into. So my suggestion, if you have to use welded elbows, if you are stuck at only 90 degree increments, then what I would say is get it as close as you can, but realize that you are going to have to do some manual fabrication to get that turbo to sit exactly where you want. A lot of times the angle of the ports at the head is going to be a big driving factor. If the ports on the head are, or the, the, the flange mounting on the head is going to be perpendicular to the mounting surface of the turbo, this is a much easier process, but I know that's not always the case. So at this point, what we could do is we could get our dimension tool out and we could figure out how long these straight sections are. Um, we actually do, we can configure it a little bit. We can make them shorter, but basically what we need to do is say, okay, we've got about 50 millimeters here. So I'm going to set that to 50 and then just take a look at this one. Uh, it looks like this one's about 90. If I set it to 90, it's going to change this angle here. Uh, and then now we know that we need a 50 millimeter straight section, a 90 millimeter straight section. This one's going to be driven. That's okay. And it looks like about 13 and a half millimeters. So it's pretty small. Now, in reality, what you could do is probably grind down the, um, the angles on these a little bit and get it to work in reality, but this will at least get you close. So from here, I would finish the sketch and then I would go to my creation tools and just use the pipe tool. You can do a sweep or you can use other tools if you want, uh, but the pipe tool already handles this if you're just doing traditional round piping or these welded elbows. Now, keep in mind that when you're using the pipe tool, this is going to treat it all as one big section, and it's not going to divide it up as if these are individual solid bodies. So if you have to do that, then what you would want to do is turn off chain selection, and you would need to use this on each individual section. But I'm going to do this 48 and a quarter millimeters and uh, 1.75 section thickness. So if you're using like a schedule 10 weld elbow, that's probably about right. And I'll say, okay. So that takes me from the flange at the head to my collector uh, for, for one pipe. And this is the method that I would use if I was stuck using weld elbows and this would get you close. It's not perfect again, because the way that these sketches work in 3d, it's not ideal. But what we're going to do now is we're going to repeat the process and we're going to kind of look at how we would do this if we weren't restricted by only 90 degree bends for these weld elbows and only straight sections. If we had a little bit of freedom to play around with it. So I'm going to start a new sketch. Again, pick whatever plane you want because in a 3D sketch, it, it doesn't matter. There is a default sketch plane, but we're not worried about it in this case. Then once again, we're going to go to include 3D geometry. I'm going to take the back and the front of the port I'm dealing with, and let's go ahead and go to this front one here. That way we can deal with the restrictions that we're going to have with the other pipe already. And then we'll go ahead and hide the solid bodies, hide the flange and the collector. But I'm going to leave this pipe here because it's going to be kind of important. So I still want to come out of the head with an arc. Uh, I, I just generally think that that's going to be a, a good way to do it. 
you're generally not going to be coming straight out of the head with a, a, a straight pipe. But we do need to add our tangency reference. So I'm going to put a straight line there. And then I'm just going to put a straight line here. So this tangency reference, again, construction, we don't want it to be included when we generate a pipe. And then we'll make these tangent. We are going to make this 90 degrees, even though when we're dealing with uh, just buying mandrel bent tubing, we don't have that same restriction. And then I'm going to give it a dimension with D on the keyboard. And I'm going to use the same values, 57.15. Um, or, you know what, if we're buying mandrel bent tubing, it's probably going to be a, a nice round number because the mandrels are generally, they're not cast, so they're generally a bit nicer. So let's just use 50 millimeters. It's going to be a bit easier. So now we've got this one coming out at an angle. It doesn't match this because honestly, I don't, I don't care for what we're doing, but really all I'm going to do is come out tangent to this and then work my way over. So if I want to switch planes, I can click on a different plane here, and then I can kind of work my way, let's maybe go this direction, and then come over here. Uh, so it's a bit wild right now, but basically what we're doing is we're building out these sections, and we're just going to add a fillet between them. So I'm going to fill it from here to here. I'm going to use that same 50 millimeter radius value. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. And then we'll do the same thing here. The thing that you need to watch out for with this method is situations like this, where you don't actually have enough room to make that work. Uh, so if that happens, what you need to do is move this. And you want to select that endpoint and use Move Copy and see if you can move it down to where you get that tangent line back. Um, again, that's a little bit wild, a little bit funky, but hopefully that you get the idea there. So we can kind of move this, move these around in 3D a little bit using the move copy. And then we're going to say, okay. And if you have to measure these angles, you would do it the same way that we drove the angles before. So you'd find the start and the end points, make these construction, and then you would do a dimension between these. And I'm just going to say, okay, but then I'm going to right click and I'm going to toggle it as driven because I'm not using it to drive it unless I absolutely need to. But then we can see, all right, well, I need about 139, 140 degrees on that bend. We know this one's 90. I have another one over here. I could do the same process measure. And then I can also check on these straight lines. Again, we're already over 20 minutes in. I'm not gonna go through every step of this, but it's the same process. And then we'll go to create, pipe, do the same thing. Now, one thing you'll notice is it's automatically treating it as a cut. That's because we've got a small amount of overlap here. Uh, I don't want to treat it as a cut. I want to treat it as a new body. So I'm going to say, okay. But then if I go into my sketch and I show the sketch, I can play around by rotating these a little bit. So uh, again, moving in 3D sketches can be pretty tricky, but there are some things that we can do. So I can kind of tweak that around. And you can see we're maybe overlapping a little bit there, but honestly, that's probably enough to do it in reality. Uh, and there we go. So we have we're able to kind of tweak, play around with them and get them in the right spot. And then what we do is we go back and just double check those dimensions. So if you show the sketch, right click and show the dimensions, you'll be able to go through and see, okay, well, if I dimensioned all of my arcs, I can see exactly what angles I need. I need 90 coming out of the head. I've got a straight section there. I would put a driven dimension on, and then I would um, you know, go through and check the angles of all those arcs. Now, if you happened to be trying to do this with equal length runners, so in this case, we're dealing with a turbo manifold. If it was, let's say a divided uh, T4 flange, and we really wanted the, you know, the runners to be the same size because of the exhaust pulses or whatever, then we could use the same process and just dimension each section, right? If you know you're dealing with 90 degree arcs, that makes it pretty easy. And then you just have to get all those straight sections to match. And then you can get at least fairly close to consistent length. Again, I just, just words of caution that when we're dealing with 3D sketching, and it's not just a fusion problem, it's, it's a general problem. But when we're dealing with 3D sketching, uh, then 
it just becomes more complicated. Um, I think that I chose, yeah, I chose different ports the first time I went through this. Uh, so you can see that they are um, a bit different, but the process is exactly the same. So whether or not you're using weld elbows and sticking to 90 degree bends or 45 degree bends, or if you've got a little bit more freedom and flexibility, then what you can do is use straight lines and then just go back and add a fillet after the fact to a consistent radius value. And that honestly is a much easier process to do, now, making sure that you do it that way. Uh, last word of caution for you, or last sort of note or tip here, is even if you are using the straight line method, so let's say that we were doing a new 3D sketch and we were going from here to here. Now, if you are doing the straight line method, you can still use things like perpendicular constraints to make sure that you only have 90 degree bends. So for example, if I do a 50 millimeter radius there and 50 here, 50 there, even though I use the straight line method, these were all perpendicular, meaning that every single one of those bends was gonna be at 90 degrees. Of course, dealing with a, an angled flange, uh, again, I think this one is 15 degrees, but dealing with that, complicates the process exponentially. It makes it so much harder. But I know that the reality of people out there doing this, they're not gonna have the luxury of having everything work perfectly. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more information on how you can build your own manifolds, how you can play around with 3D sketching and fusion, make sure that you use just some consistency between defining those things like arcs and lines, and then using the pipe tool just to make your job a little bit easier. You can get a 3D model. You can really figure out how much space you have to work with, figure out what parts you need to order before you do that process, and then build it in reality. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.